Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you stopped by and I hope you will consider subscribing. So today we are going to be making pepper relish. Now my garden is bursting at the seams with peppers. I planted way too many pepper plants and I have a variety of them. So I am just going to be making a pepper relish with the peppers that I have on hand. I'm gonna use a, the variety that was ready to be picked. Uh, the national, the recipe we're gonna use comes from the national Center of Home Food Preservation and they do have two recipes on their website. One is for sweet pepper relish and one is for hot pepper relish. The recipes are exactly the same except they give differing amounts for if you want hot pepper relish they're obviously using more hot peppers. The sweet pepper relish they're just using a green bell and red bell. So I have like I said a variety of peppers so I'm going to be using several varieties. The only thing that they note is um, you can use peppers can be safely swapped in canning recipes without any issues. So you can use a variety of peppers to make this that you just don't want to change the amounts. The note that they make as far as using the amount of peppers, they just say there should be no more than 10 cups of ground peppers for this recipe to be safe. So you can use whatever variety that you like and if you wanna be specific, I will list both um, recipes in the description box for you so you know the amounts that they're using for sweet pepper relish versus hot pepper relish. But like I said, I'm gonna be using a combination so it's anyone's guess um, how hot or how mild mine will be. Mine will probably be a little more mild than hot. I do have some um, jalapeno, I have some green and red jalapenos I'm using I have some cubanelles. I have banana peppers. These are going crazy in my garden. And then I have some green bell pepper. I have some yellow bell peppers. Those are going to be sweet, obviously. And then I have some pimentos. And I'm just going to be using those. So I'm going to be using, once you grind them up, you can't have any more than 10 cups. So our goal is to get 10 cups of ground peppers. They do state that peppers and onions were ground using a stand mixer grinder attachment with the coarse blade for them to do the test recipe. I don't have a grinder attachment for my KitchenAid mixer, so I'm just going to use my food processor. So uh, the procedure is, well first you only need a few ingredients. Like I said, we need a total of 10 cups of ground peppers. We need one and a half cups of ground onion. You need two and a half cups of dis distilled white or cider, cider can't talk today. Distilled white or cider vinegar. You just have to make sure it's labeled as 5% acidity. So whatever you like. We need two cups of sugar, four teaspoons of pickling salt, and four teaspoons of mustard seeds. So it's really a basic relish, um, but it's going to be delicious. So the procedure is to wash your bell peppers. Obviously you want to trim the seeds and the stems. And then for the jalapenos, if you want it hot, obviously you can leave the seeds and membranes. If you want less heat, remove the membranes and the seeds, that's entirely up to you. The onions, you're gonna peel and core them, and then you're going to cut them in large pieces, and then you're going to coarsely grind them however you choose to do so. So that's where we're gonna get started. Okay, so like I said, for the bell peppers, we are just going to, I'm just gonna cut them in uh, big chunks like this and that'll take care of the stem and the seeds. We don't want that obviously. So I will just cut these in big chunks just like this and that is what we will process. For the jalapenos, I am just going to get rid of the stem and then just cut them in half. I'm gonna keep the seeds and the membranes because I want a little bit of heat. Most of my peppers are sweet peppers or they're on the uh, mild side. So I'm just going to stem them and then cut them in half. And then for the cubanelles and the banana peppers, I'm gonna do pretty much the same that I did with the jalapenos. I'm just going to remove the stem end and then I'm just gonna cut these in big chunks. I'm gonna keep the membranes and the seeds. Uh, my banana peppers are not hot. They're more of a sweet banana pepper, but I'm gonna keep the seeds and the membranes anyway. The cubanelles have a tiny bit of heat, not very much. I've just put everything in my food processor with the processing blade and I'm just gonna pulse it till it's the texture that I want kind of like you would get using a grinder. Okay, so for the onion, I just peeled it and cut it into large chunks. Okay, 
okay guys i have everything all set to go so now what we need to do is we want to put all of our ingredients into a stock pot and we are going to bring it up to a boil and boil gently for 30 minutes so i've got my 10 cups of peppers look how pretty that is love all the different colors so no more than 10 cups and that does include the juice then to that we are going to add a cup and a half of onion i used about two large sweet onion is what i processed we need two and a half cups of vinegar i'm going to use cider vinegar but you can also use uh, white distilled vinegar we need two cups of sugar we need four teaspoons of canning and pickling salt and then we also need four teaspoons of mustard seed yellow mustard seed now i did want to mention that if you wanted to add more heat or other spices it's always safe to add dried spices so say that you like me you didn't have a lot of hot peppers and you wanted a little extra heat you could always add some crushed red pepper flakes or you could add some uh, ground cayenne pepper um, anything like that is fine as long as it's a dried spice it's fine to add it won't alter anything or make anything unsafe for canning so we are just going to give this a good stir and then we're going to bring this up to a boil and let it boil gently for 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna get my canner and my jars ready. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. I boiled it gently for 30 minutes, just like the instruction said, and it just turned out beautiful and it tastes delicious. Actually, I had the perfect amount of heat um, to mine. So anyway, we are all set for canning. I have three quarts of simmering water in my steam canner if you're a water bath canning you want to make sure you have enough water in your canner that it will cover your jars by uh, at least an inch after you put them inside your canner um, you can can this in pint jars or half pint jars i'm going to be canning in both the processing time is the same for either one it's going to be 10 minutes that we're going to be processing which leads me to my next point we don't need to pre-sterilize lids or jars if we're canning for 10 minutes or more so we are so we are all set to go we're going to start with two jars the only thing i want to note is you want to make sure that your jars are hot okay so we are going to fill our jars to one inch of headspace I love the combination of peppers. It's really, really delicious and really pretty. Okay, once you get to half of an inch of headspace, you're gonna take a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife, or a chopstick to release your air bubbles. So just kind of poke around your jar. Um, if you need to, you can adjust your head space, but mine's pretty good actually. So then we're going to take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean the rims. I'm going to get, make sure we get a good seal. Then you're going to center your lid and add your band to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. Okay guys, this recipe was pretty spot on. They said we should get six pints and that's, I got the equivalent of that because I did some of mine in half pint jars. So um, if you are, regardless of your water bath or steam canning, you wanna go ahead and put the lid on. You're gonna crank your heat up to high. If you are water bath canning, you wanna make sure, like I said, the water covers your jars by at least an inch. We're gonna bring it up to a full rolling boil if you are water bath canning. If you are steam canning, you have a gauge on your lid that tells you when to start timing. We are going to, uh, once you get to the correct spot to start your processing time, either to a full rolling boil or in your green zone on your steam canner, you wanna reduce your heat just to maintain that. You don't want it boiling too vigorously throughout the process. So uh, we're gonna bring it up to temperature, process for 10 minutes, and then I'll bring you back. Guys, we are all done. I processed for 10 minutes, like I told you, and then I let my jars cool in my canner for about five. With just as an FYI, with steam canning, you don't have to let your jars cool in your canner if you don't want to, but with water bath canning, you definitely should. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you how beautiful it looks. So pretty and tasty. It's really, really yummy. This is a fantastic way to use up 
a lot of peppers. So if you're like me and your garden is overflowing with peppers, this was a great way to use up about eight pounds. It was about eight pounds of peppers. So um, it was a great way to use them up. Here's some that I had left, just so you can kind of see it's still really hot, um, but you can see what it looks like. Did that look delicious? It, and it, like I said, it tastes really yummy too be perfect. I will leave some ideas in the description box of ways to use it, but one of the ways that comes to mind, and they do mention this in the recipe, is to put it, especially people in the south, like to put it in their beans or in their greens. And it also is will make a great appetizer if you put it over cream cheese and then serve it with crackers. So those are just a couple of ideas. I'll try to leave some more in the description box for you. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and I will see you next time. Have a great day.